Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, our ninth uh, talk in the, our art forum series. Um, today we have three former featured speakers, so I think that's great. It's, it's good to see all three of you. Um, those of you who haven't been on this before, uh, we're recording this, and after it's recorded <laughs> on YouTube, we have six recording um, on YouTube at this point. So uh, you can always uh, go on YouTube and, and see what we've done in the past. Um, so our featured speaker today is Peter Anderson. Uh, he's a, an abstract artist in New Hampshire. And as most of you know, uh, he's been working with me to put on these art form speakers. So uh, uh, his work is really interesting and I think uh, we're gonna have a good talk. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. All right, I'm gonna. Um, well, let me know when you can see that. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. So I don't want to scare you off, but uh, this is the, the easiest way I could figure out how to do this instead of doing it in PowerPoint, which just use my photo library. So I'm not going to, I'm going to kind of use this as a guide, but uh, we can start here. So um, I'm glad we have the, the, the three previous people because you guys all did really well. So I've kind of learned from you what, what to do. Um, and I, so what I, when I was trying to think about what, what to show, and what to talk about, I thought I'd, uh, a little bit of background about me and then I'll, we'll, I'll just kind of work through it. So I didn't start painting until I was in my early forties. Um, I was a musician. Uh, I did a bunch of different things. I was an English teacher and it, I, but I always kind of dabbled in art, uh, as on the side. And then in just 30 years ago, 90, 92 or 93, um, I really, I lived in a place in LA where I had, uh, I lived in a loft and I had a studio for the first time, a real place that I could dedicate it to. So I started, I went out and went to what was then the art store was now Dick Blick. And I bought a bunch of stuff and uh, brought it home and started painting. So my first, uh, this was one of the first, and this is a really bad photograph, sorry, but it's, it's all I have left of it. Um, I, I, as you'll see when you see uh, some of my other stuff, uh, one of my favorite painters and, and the influence, probably the strongest influence on my work is Richard Diebenkorn. And I'd actually lived previous to this, I'd lived in Ocean Park when he was painting his Ocean Park series. So I've been just uh, really infatuated with him. And there's a lot of, I mean, I lived two blocks from him when he was in Ocean Park. He spent time in New Mexico where I, where I grew up. Um, he spent time in San Francisco, um, so they're, I don't know, they're just some confluence here. So anyway, this, these three, um, oops, can I get rid of this? This triptych is my, was my ocean, this is my ocean park uh, kind of triptych. These are 30, 32 by 48, so there's, there are three of them. And they kind of reminded me, this one reminded me of the Santa Monica airport. Uh, so I did three of them um, as, as really as an experiment. Then I, these are what I call my Rodney King uh, paintings because I lived downtown in this loft in Japantown in, in during the Rodney King riots. So it was crazy and there was all kinds of stuff going on. And I had these three big paintings. And I, I just kind of wanted to do something that was calm. So I did this triptych um, that reminded, it was, I was thinking of New Mexico when I did it. Um, it was the first time I put it flat on the floor and I used lots of turpentine and kind of played with it and, and came up with this. I think the next one is, yeah. So that's, it's 30, so it's 30, 48 by three times 36. So there's 36 by 48, three of them. So I did this one. Um, and it was interesting because I, I really tried to use, I used very, as you can tell, very thin paint, um, pulled it off kind of like you do with uh, when you're painting, ra ragging, uh, putting paint on stuff like, so I did that, not really understanding what I was doing, but it, it seemed to work. So these I still have, I, I could have sold the one on the far left uh, a couple of years ago and I decided not to. 
uh, because I wanted to keep the game. So that's three of those. Um, and this is the so these are six that I did all within say two or three months. This is a large. This is forty eight by fifty four, I think. Um, and this one is called Bakersfield because before I I just lived in in, in L A for the third time. I lived in the Central Valley uh, in California, and this just seemed to me like. And again, you can see Deben Corn's influence here, but it seemed like a what you would see from a, an airplane if you flew over Bakersfield. So um, this one is actually in my house. I still have this one too. So after that period, then I, I moved to San Francisco, lived there for four years, moved to in New York for three years. I didn't have a studio and I didn't paint. I didn't do any any art at all until I did this painting after we had moved from New York to New Hampshire, where I am now. And we moved in November of 99. And I decided, I don't know if you're, you guys remember, but the whole Y2K thing with the, or, you know, the, the world's going to come to an end. Um, so I thought, well, I'll stay up until midnight on December 31st and I'll paint something. So that's what this is. Um, I later, this one also was painted uh, pretty much flat at the end. I later gave it a, a name after a town in New Mexico, Chimayo. But uh, the colors kind of just look southwestern to me. So this, I started again because I had I moved into an old house with a with a barn that I could use as uh, at least part of the year as a studio. So I did this painting. Um, this one is thirty by seventy two. Um, it reminded me of Kansas. I I always wanted to do a big wide painting. Um, these are all oil, uh, oil on canvas at this point. This is another, this is 48. I, I tend to paint in 48 by 48 inches when I uh, do large paintings. So this is one based on memories of the great sand dunes in Colorado. Um, there are these big sand, it, it's it's a national park. It's it's out there, the very big sand dunes. So that I did this, this actually is in uh, a friend's house in Florida. This is, yeah. Also, someplace in New Mexico, this is large. This is 48 by 60, maybe. Um, it's a large, it's, it's a large piece. This one is in somebody's house in, in Boston. Then um, there was that. So that finally I, I got to this studio uh, about five years ago. And I bought and I was had another had space to paint again. So I started doing some again, 48 by 48. This I'll talk about more, but I did a series of, of paintings. This one is, again, is kind of reminds me of, of Central California for some reason, so uh, the Central Valley. Um, so that's what this one's called, uh, the Cent Central Valley, California. Then I, I did a, I took a trip to Ireland a few years later, and I did this series. So this is, there's one, two, three, that, that one needs to go back. Um, so these are based on Southwest Ireland. Um, this place, nowhere in particular. The uh, this one is Slayhead, uh, which is the farthest west point, I believe. And it's it's uh, down there. And this one, I was interested because I was trying to have this feeling of two two types of perspective. Because um, I do a lot of, as you'll see, a lot of what I'm doing these days is like you're looking down on something so down on fields like looking at an airplane but at the same time I wanted to have a horizon line so that's where this came from so I don't know I what I was thinking is if you use google earth where you can go into 3d mode it kind of it, it changes and it comes so it kind of goes up and down don't know if it works or not but uh so that's I did this this series this is a uh, from a, a memory of dingle I don't know if anybody's ever been to dingle uh, Ireland, but it's it's a pretty place. Um, these are a little bit out of order. This is not Ireland. This is Tucson, Arizona. Um, I painted this. This is forty eight by forty eight. This is the first thing. I, first time I tried on panel. So this is uh, oil and cold wax actually on uh, on a panel. This is another of the and the reason I'm, I'm showing you these because I just want to give you an idea of the paintings type stuff that I've done. Uh, of a beach in Ireland. 
this I don't know where it was. It's just a memory. It kind of looks like I've never been to Africa, but it looks like I would think the savanna might look um, in Africa someplace. This uh, is two. I did two years old here. Um, the name of this one is Cranberry Bog. This was is also on panel, and this is one where I really kind of experimented. I had the panel actually the on this easel here. And I was frustrated with it. And I had a big piece of plexiglass that I had paint on. So I put the paint on the on the, the, the plexiglass on the panel and walked across. I don't know if you've ever seen. Uh, uh, who's the guy? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, famous German, German artist. Um, can't remember. Anyway, so I walked across it like that. Gerhard Richter. Gerhard Richter. Yep. And it was, I thought of it because I've seen the movie with him where he, he, he goes with these big squeegees. I thought, well, let's try that. So the, the orange came through on that. And then some of the, the uh, burgundies came through on that. So it was an experiment, but it's, it, I think it worked pretty well. I kind of like it. This one is still, well, work in process, uh, progress. Um, 48 by 48 on panel, oil and cold wax on panel. I, I'm not happy with the, the, base, the, the ground part of it, like sit, sitting right over here. Um, but I thought I'd throw it in here and show you. This same same thing was, uh, this is a, reminded me of Southern, uh, of Northern New Mexico, actually Southern Colorado. The Plains, um, 48 by 48 oil and cold wax. Uh, this is one, this one is uh, winter. I painted this last year. Um, because this time of year it's it's gray here. These are the colors that it, I see when I look out the window. So, this was uh, this again was had another painting underneath it, um, and then I painted over it. And then with cold wax, if you use cold wax, you can kind of scrape away. You can get uh, effects like that. So this is that. This is a panel. This is just oil with a lot of uh, very thin oil paints. Uh, lots of kind of washes. Um, I think it's 32 by 40. It's 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 not that big. And this one I'm gonna it, it's I don't know that it's done either. I I'm thinking of doing uh, some glazes on the on different parts of it um, and see how because I think that'll make some of the definition pop out a little more. Um, I've never really used glazes, so I'm thinking of doing that this year. Um, this is another one. This one is 24 by 48. Uh, oil and cold wax on panel. 24 by 48, oil and cold wax and lots of turpentine. Uh, it's on uh, canvas, actually. And then if I go back, um, I want to show you these, you see the mouse, these three, paintings here. Um, actually, I skipped this one. This one I did uh, six months ago, I guess. Also oil and cold wax on panel, uh, on canvas. So these three paintings, oh my gosh, are, were the beginning of something and, and, and what I'm going to talk about. The, I really like to do serial art and I, Anna, you're a, the master of that in, in many ways. I mean, I've, some of my series have gotten over 100. I know you're well over 200 or so in some of yours. And it really, so this, these three paintings um, started with a photograph that I took of a failed painting of 48 by 48 inch painting. And I took it in and to my iPad. And that's what really started me on some of the stuff I've been doing with, with uh, Procreate. So I took it into my iPad and then painted it. Uh, and, and I did three variations. So it's the same picture, the same underlying photograph, but I did it in did it with a different palette just to, to, to play around with it. And then I actually ended up uh, printing these out, having these printed out because they're just di digital images on canvas. And I did a triptych and was able to sell it of three, the three, and they kind of work nicely together. Again, it's kind of Southern Colorado, Northern New Mexico -ish type of thing. This one is called Pueblito Viejo, I think. Or something. It just reminds me of New Mexico um, somehow. And this is reminded me of the San Gradia Cristo Mountains, which are in Southern Colorado. Um, but so this started me on the, with the idea of, of doing series. 
So two years ago, um, it coincided with several things. One, COVID and the kind of lockdown. And two, um, I that's about when I decided to start doing Instagram. So I got on Instagram and I realized, I didn't realize, but I started making things that were more digital because they were easy to, easier to, to post. So this particular, uh, it's a monotype, a holograph actually, is was the spark for this first variation, which I, one of my favorite pieces of music are the Goldberg variations, which is a Bach, um, 25 or 26 of them. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, because sometimes if you have a big blank canvas, you don't know where to start. A lot of people do mark making, different things. It's, but I thought maybe if I have rules or I have some guidelines. So I said, okay, I'm going to use this structure. I'm not going to try to make the paintings look like the, or represent the music in any way, but I'm going to use that structure. One basic uh, piece and then 24 variations of it using the same scales or different, the way that Bach did it. And he did, and if it's a marvelous piece of music, but then in, in his case, he has one at the beginning and at the end, it's the same thing, but they're, they're kind of mirror images of each other. So that's how this started. Um, I thought it would be 26 pieces and it ended up, so this is the original uh, choreograph. It's, it's well over 300 pieces at this point. Um, so how I did it, I, and I don't have the plate here. Um, I took the, uh, mono, uh, the plate that was from that, first image, the plexiglass plate that was that went into the press, and it didn't have much left on it because the holograph is, is where you ad adhere something to the to the paper. So the, the orange stuff there on this got taken off. So it wasn't on, on the plate anymore. So it's really pretty much, there's not a lot on the plate, but I started playing with it and putting it on over different things. I would put it over different pieces of, uh, got some show and tell stuff here. Uh, I always say mm -hmm. yeah. I always save the uh, palettes when I'm painting. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have all of these, so I would take the plate and put it over it and Peter, play with that. Yeah. These are not altered in any way. Take it off the screen share so we can see we, all, we just see the thumbnail. If you want to show us something, take us off the uh, screen share so we can see what you're showing us. Oh, okay. Stop screen share. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. So um, I keep these, I use these, uh, this gray paper that's good for mixing palettes. Um, they're disposable, but I never throw them away. Um, so I have them and then I will take the, the transparency and put it on here and then take a photograph of it. That's how they started. And I, I think of these as digital combines because um, they're really not collages, collages, but they're, I don't know, they're really photographs of a kind. They're kind of a manipulated photograph, but in, in the, in the Goldberg variations I, are just photographs. So they're sometimes two or three transparencies on top of each other, but essentially I take a photograph of it. And that's how I got to the, the, uh, the images. And like I said, I just, I, I, I did uh, tons of them. Now I have to should go back to screen sharing. Back. Okay, so mm -hmm. I absolutely don't want to go through all hundreds, all the hundreds of these, but these, I, I did a, a, a lot of them, um, and I still have the the plate, and I keep doing them. Um, this is in a, a series, another series. This was for the Goldbergs, but it's in something else that, that I'm, I'll talk about in a while. Um, this was over, so this one was the plate over a uh, two things, over a uh, palette, and also over an old uh, pastel drawing that I had. Mm. This is over a pastel that I did on sandpaper. Um, so it's chalk on sandpaper and then the, the plate on top of that. This is, you can see that I, so I just kept seeing how far I could, and I would invert it. I would do different things like that, but it basically, I like this, the image of the circle and the kind of landscapiness of this bottom portion of it. Um, 
and I just would find different things and try it. Um, and it, like I said, I have a couple hundred, I probably have a thousand pictures. I mean, it's like if a photographer takes a bunch of pictures and then you know, weeds them out. Um, another, just another version of this. This one I kind of like because it looked like the, the Holy Grail or something or a, an urn or not sure what it was. So the next, then I started thinking about how could I make this more of a, of a big piece. So each one of these are about, uh, if I print them out on my printer, I could make them about 12 inches by 12 inches. I could make them smaller. So I stitched these together with a digital tool to make a, a kind of a square. And then I realized that I could put a whole bunch of them together and do this. And that the goal is if I can find a wall big enough, um, this one is the piece is called Transmigration of Souls. It's a reference to James Joyce. Um, but I really like that. So they, these are all different ones and putting them all together. And if you put them on a, on a big wall, it's, it's kind of uh, interesting. And then I, one of my mathematical friends, we were talking about, and I'm not a mathematician at all. He was talking about what are called factorials. Uh, and so this is what I call the, uh, the, the Goldberg factorial. It's 10, if it, cause if it, if it was, this one's bigger than that. If it was 10 across and 10 down, so 100 images, um, I've got a screen saver thing that's on my Apple TV that it has them up there. And just one paint at a time will fall off. So I asked him, I said, how long would it take to go through all of the permutations of 100 pieces? And he said, that's 100 factorial. It's, it would take a billion years or something like that. It's an enormous amount of, if it was every second, if it was one second at a time, where one of the little panes would flip. So I thought that's, it's a kind of a conceptual piece, but um, I thought, well, maybe I could put it up on Amazon or something and just have it run in the background, but I never got there. But I would like to put these all up, get them all in and, and uh, try it on up. Cause this, if I did it, it would be right eight feet by or 10 feet by 10 feet. So it'd be a big piece. Um, so that's, the Goldbergs went through that. I'm still kind of, that's still kind of going. So the net, these are all I did two years ago. I did a lot of series. So the second series I did was because I used to, I used to live in, I know Paul lives in Japan. I used to live in Japan. I realized that 50 years ago, I arrived in Japan 50 years ago. So I'm dating myself. Um, one of my favorite books uh, when I was living in Japan is the Genji Monogatari, which is really the first novel I believe ever written. And it's, I think, 54 different chapters. And again, I was, I thought, here's a, another series, um, a different palette, a different way of looking at it, but still, so I started out to do 54 different pieces, roughly based on the the uh, the titles of the of the different chapters uh, of the book. So this um I used uh Duralar, which are their big sheets of um mylar essentially and i painted on those with india inks and did some of the some, i did the transparencies of those and then i put those over other plexiglass uh, sheets that i have and then use those for the composition to take the, the photo so that's how i got to these these also are not manipulated uh, in procreate or anything else they're just photographs of so they're uh, still lifes of, of a sort I also, and then I started doing, because I really liked, I've always been fascinated by the Oriental Scrolls. And I, I did some with that kind of uh, perspective because it, it reminded me of, uh, these reminded me of, of Japanese or Chinese scrolls when I was doing them. This is another, this is a festive, it's, it has something to do with a festival uh, in one of the things. This is actually is a, the, India inks over a stencil over a painting. And then I took a picture of it. So it's three levels deep. Um, this is a plexiglass uh, palette that I had used. So you it, but it has, you can see through it in certain parts. And then that's placed over a, an assortment of used paper towels. And then I took the picture. And when, as I was doing this, um, this one in particular reminded me of Japanese the, the scrolls. I mean, the, the, they're gilded, a lot of them, but the background there um, 
actually that's a painting that I put it on. So it's a, a couple of different things. It just has a, to me, a kind of a oriental aspect to it, but the colors and the, the movement of it were that I like that. This is a, this one to me looks like a, a Japanese, uh, a woman with a, in a kimono with bending over, or maybe she's going to the store. Um, but that's abstract artists, you know, we see things. I didn't start out with that in mind, but that's that's what I see. And this this one actually has uh, this, can you see the mouse? It has um, some used paper towels that I used to clean up and I, I put that in, uh, in the piece as well. This is another one, a close up of that. This one is uh, two different plates, but the same series. And this one um, is kind of tongue in cheek. I called it Geisha Descending a Staircase because it you can see right there, it looks like a Geisha's head. Mm -hmm. Unintended, um, which is one of the things I like about doing this. It's, it's, I think of it as unintended consequences. It's like you don't really start out to, to do that, but it, it turns out that way. So this one, uh, I enjoy, I enjoy doing this. When I printed this one out too, it's, it's this is more, uh, this is the, the ink paintings over a Mylar painting and put up in the, a lot of things I do, I put them up in the window of my studio to get the backlight of from the sun. And that's how you get kind of that translucence. And I did, I've done a bunch of those, you'll see there, there's other things, but so this has a couple of different, there's oil, oil paint on it, turpentine on it, uh, India ink on it, um, and a couple of different layers of things. Same thing, uh, just a different, I was like this orange area is a, a, was a large 32 by 40 inch pastel drawing that I'd done a long time ago. Uh, and I put it over because I just, the, the combination of the colors worked really well, I thought. This one, um, when I was researching, I did. There's, there's, there are still some ex extant uh, copies of most, of many of the drawings and that, that went along with the uh, Genji Monogatari. And one of them is this idea. I can't remember the Japanese word for it now. Um, the idea of looking down into a house from above, and that's a lot of the the paintings are that way. So it's kind of this to me. If you've ever been in a ryokan or a Japanese inn or an older Japanese building, they're kind of open. And this reminded me of this part here of kind of being somewhat around a fire and looking looking down at it. So um, I took and I got that idea from what I did was doing research on the on the actual the the, the actual and it's the, the 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 actual one is a big huge scroll. It's I don't know hundred feet long or something. It's just one one picture after another and one more. Uh, this is a couple of different. Uh, Slot, uh, plates that I did it with. Again, got a lot in here. So that's, those are, so the Goldbergs and the, the Genji Monogatari. I did six or seven other, uh, it's all, all of it's on my Instagram feed, but I did a smaller series of five or six pieces. I did one on Macbeth. I did one on uh, Babylon Sisters from Steely Dan. I did one on uh, a couple of different things. Um, so I, I, and I continue to do that kind of thing because I can do them every day and I like doing it. Um, a year ago, this is one of the paintings I showed you before. I had the idea and, and Anna, this is the one that spot, that got me thinking about it. And actually I, it's in a show right now. So I took this painting and I took a small piece of mat board, maybe three inches by six inches and just started putting it on and looking at it and then taking photographs of very small pieces, parts of the of the painting. And I got to about, again, 30, 30 pictures. Um, the one that is, if you can see the mouse, this red spot, that had a lot, it, that kept coming back, but there's, I could see them. So I called it parent children because it was, the, they all are part of this, but then in, in their own way. So you can see this section right here is what this became. So I took a photograph of them. Um, printed them out on my large format printer and then painted them over again with watercolor. So that's why you get some, that, that feeling. But this is, again, it's, it's maybe a three by four inch piece of that big painting. Um, and then I got one particular corner that I really liked. Um, and I did, I think, four different versions. I have them here. Again, these are 
print it out and then paint it over paint it with, with either gouache and watercolor or a combination of the two. So the, these are, um, I think all, there are four of them and they're called, uh, I call them crossroads because it kind of looks like that. This is the same one where I tried to play with the, the uh, perspective a little bit. And for some reason, it reminded me of a, an Adobe building um, uh, and the kind of perspective of it going away from you. Why, I don't know, but it, that, that's what it reminds me of. This is another piece, of, pretty simple. This one is, uh, actually, this is just a, one of the photographs. I didn't do anything else with it. This is just a close-up from one piece of that painting. This is a, a piece close to that that piece, uh, printed out and then uh, painted, over-painted some with, with some oil and some turpentine and some, I think I even used some chalk uh, pan pastels in this uh, as well. This is another of the, another version of the crossroads. Okay, I got one more of that. No, there's, and then I did, there's, I think I only have one piece of it here, but uh, I did two pieces here that worked, a lot of them uh, in the, that are in the show um, are diptychs because they're, they're very close to each other in, in proximity on the canvas. So um, this is one, and then there's a piece that went along with it. Here's the, the last of the, uh, crossroads. This is still another piece that's in the upper left-hand corner of the painting. Um, this is a detail uh, printed out, and then I painted this in watercolor. And then I, this kind of fed, feeds into where I'm going to go next in terms of the uh, next project I did. But I started doing things. This so the lines were painted. So there was a photograph. Then the lines, the black lines, were painted uh, done in Procreate, then printed out, and then painted in watercolors, and then I did them over in graphite in, in a, with a pencil. Um, this one looks to me like, it, it, this is segueing into this next series that I did, which is all about maps and looking at things from an aerial standpoint. Um, this actually is not part of the paint. I just put it in here because I like the piece. So this one actually, I, it's a drawing I did on paper. Then I put it into Procreate. Then I printed, I painted it in Procreate, printed it out, and then paint it over it again to get to this. And it's a small piece. It's eight by 10, I think. Same thing with this. This is eight by 10. It's just a, a drawing that I did um, kind of as I started was starting to think about maps, which is coming up next. So the New Hampshire uh, topographical series, um, an old friend of mine, when I moved to New Hampshire, gave me 30 topographical maps of New Hampshire. Um, out of the 60, I think, that, the, of the state from the 1950s. And I've had them for 25 years, longer, uh, and never th knew what, I, what to do with them. So I decided to take the maps, put them on my, on my table, take Duralar again, the, the clear uh, plastic, and do tracings of those. And the tracings just would be uh, roads, lakes, um, and boundary markers that are on the maps. So it occurred to me as I was doing that, that, that maps are in a way, maybe the original or one of the first pieces of original, of, of, of abstract art. Because a map is essentially an abstract art piece. And I started thinking about, okay, looking at these, these are all looking for, at it uh, down on them. So I did, these are um, some examples of the, of the tracings that I did. And I got, I did 20 of them, I think. I've got some left to do. I got a little bored with that. So then I started painting in. So this is not necessarily this, this piece, but I went in and, and then I started doing it in Procreate. So I took the, a photo of the transparency on white paper, put it in Procreate and then painted it. Um, and then I started to get more and more ideas about where this could go. This is another one, again, in Procreate. And I, I really enjoyed doing this because it, it was a good exercise in, in values, and an exercise in terms of how can I get, you know, play with, even though this is all digitally done, this is all, uh, the color is all done in Procreate, how can I put washes and, you know, so I would get, because you can control the the, the, the opacity uh, of, of the color. So I would do it and then make it lighter and lighter and lighter. And it was interesting. So where I'm going with this ultimately is that these all now have become studies for it, which I'm gonna try to do um on canvas and panel on, on big pieces but um so 
I know this is a lot, and I'm sorry if I'm boring you with it, but so in addition to putting stuff up in my window, I realized I put something up, I put a piece up in, uh, in front of the window and the window had a screen in it. And I took the picture of it and I really, really love the gridness of, it, of the, that I got with this. Um, and in some ways it's, but not really, it remind, there's a famous uh, woman painter that lived in New Mexico, Agnes Martin, who did lines. And she did these unbelievable big paintings of just very faint lines, a lot of them, and just they're gorgeous, but they're really minimalist. So I, I thought about that. Um, I read somewhere that Diebenkorn sometimes would paint he would draw in little grids, not to the extent that this is, but I just like the the gridness of it. Um, and I'm some of the stuff that I'm doing now. I'm trying to figure out a way with screens to basically take big pieces of screen and a brayer and ink and ink ink it up like you would for a print, and then put it back down on so I can transfer the the pattern onto a. But uh, I haven't successfully done it yet. But and then paint it in. So this is, I did a whole series of pieces that are based on um, transparencies put in the window and then uh, taken into Procreate, painted in, and painted in Procreate. So um, different colors, again, all maps. These still to me are look, uh, in my, and to my eye, I'm looking down on, on things. Um, another one, and then I started doing, as you'll see in a minute, I started, I took it and then I started drawing in, in Procreate, the lines in different colors of the grid, um, which gives it a kind of a density, which I, I kind of like. Um, this is a real kind of un, unfinished one, but I still like it. It's kind of raw. There's I did a triptych of this where the screen really still is very, very visible. So there's that one, that one, and it actually they're behind me on the wall. There, there I have a show starting in a month, another local show, um, and it's going to be all of these, uh, these in there. Um, and then this one is actually over my desk right now. This, I think I like, this is my favorite one just because of the palette. Um, it still looks like maps. But you can still see the, uh, the gridness of it, but it's the, with the river going through it. So this is kind of the direction I've been going in for the last year. This is an even more detailed one. Um, sometimes I wonder why. This took a long time to do. This was all done in Procreate too. So it started as a picture of a screen and and I put it in here. Um, then with as I was the lines, I had a pick two, a couple of pictures of leaves frozen in ice. Um, so I took those pictures, pulled them into Procreate, and drew it line with lines in it. And I think these are the last three. I did this triptych of a, a panel uh, in in the window, and then I did three different colorways of it um, in Procreate. Painted this in Procreate, and I've got those have those as a triptych as well. So then the last ones, and then I'll, I'll be done with this. This is a panel. Um, it's, well, you might not be able to see it. It's probably 24 by, I don't know if you can look at the picture of me. It's 24 by 30, something like that. Um, and it was used, I, I took a, a workshop in printing. Um, up in White River Junction, Vermont, and it was a water using watercolors and crayon to ash on the plate on sanded plates, and then running them through a press. So this is the plate that was left over. I took that. So then I did a series of three, uh, two different um, triptychs using that plate, and then doing it in, in Procreate. And these are the ones that I'm thinking that I'm going to try to do as maybe 36 by 48, something like that. Um, I think they'd make nice nice paintings. So these three are, are one. And then the last three I have, it's still from the same plate, but I colored them a different way. These are studies for, um, and one, one last one, and then this is the last slide I have. This is actually behind me. It's 48 by 60, and it's um, based on this this one. I'm not sure whether the colors are going to get there, but um, so I'm trying to do a, a, I've never had a lot of luck um, planning out before, but so this one I had, I had the drawing, I did the drawing, I kind of mocked it up and we'll see where it goes. So that's, uh, that's what I had to show. Um, that's about all I got. Well, I've got a lot more than that, but.
Anybody have any um, any questions? <laughs>